am walking. His name was Patrick Sonia. He was executed. I witnessed his killing and it changed my life because I knew the people would never see it. The work coming out of that execution chamber was, I got to tell the story to the American people because they're never going to get close to this. When I came out of the execution chamber, when Patrick Sonier had been electrocuted to death, I watched this man be killed in front of my eyes. And I threw up. I had never seen a killing in front of my eyes in such a cold, calculated protocol of death. <laughs> and so then that's what led me to write the book, Dead Man Walking. Everything comes out of this experience with these two agonizing sides. A perpetrator who's done a terrible crime and then those who suffered from it. And here I am in the middle and not knowing anything, so kind of learning as I go. But the death penalty kind of it's not a peripheral moral issue about what are we going to do with a few terrible criminals. Everything is in it. All our deep wounds are in this. Whether we like it or not. That's why I'm on the road, talking to the people. And here's the big thing I found out about the people. When they hear the story and you take them over to both sides, they get it. It's really not that hard. We're trying to build a big coalition so the legislature will say, hey, this is a force to be reckoned with. These are people who vote. These are people who are connected. There are 32 human beings sitting on death row in Oregon. You haven't killed anybody in 26 years. What is Oregon still doing with the death penalty on the books here? Why, why haven't you gotten rid of it? I heard Sister Helen speak in the uh, ballroom of the Hyatt Hotel in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and she lit my candle. She said some things that made me say, this is not a fair system, something's wrong here. I had never thought about it. And that's one of the things she says, people don't think about this. This system is not fair, it's flawed, it's mistake prone, it's very costly, and it's arbitrary and capricious. Punish the criminals, punish the criminals, punish the criminals. And we have nothing for restoring life. The thing I've discovered all these years of going to prison, mostly you're talking with real people because all the varnish is gone. Sister Helen did a workshop on writing and memoir writing and autobiographical writing at the Oregon State Penitentiary through the Inside Out program. And so that means that we brought 12 UO students and UO alumni um, up to the penitentiary and did this workshop led by Sister Helen. Hi. That's maximum security facility. So for them, getting to hear an author speak is a really singular experience and being invited to really do the self-examination and to engage in the vulnerability of writing your uh, memories and sharing those with a group of people is a really powerful thing. I'm reading the book of their reflections. It's literature that they've written. Like here, reading Dostoevsky, and here's one of the prisoners, reflection on the bullet, the bullet, and how in one of the characters in Dostoevsky, he has a bullet that he's looking at, examining the bullet, because he's thinking of shooting it through his brain. So he's feeling the weight of it, looking at it. Look at that small object that can, can move me over to the other side of life. With just a simple action of this, he's weighing that bullet. And don't you know this prisoner? He says, I held a bullet in my hand like that. They're just like you. They just made one terribly bad decision 
one time and are being judged for it for the rest of their life. That we are building a relationship and a sort of institutional memory and drive behind this issue and larger issues of social justice and social transformation. And I think this is an incredibly exciting time to be at the University of Oregon and is, an, is a time of incredible potential. Students, let me tell you something, and I say this to every student group that I'm in. The young people of this country could change the death penalty. And here's what I found out in meeting with politicians and all. They love to be loved by young people. She came right down to the kids. She said, you are the kids from Central Catholic High School, and you are the people who can make a difference. And we have the play of Dead Man Walking, too, that Tim Robbins wrote, and schools do the play which is wonderful because then that brings theater into the educational process. And it's called the Dead Man Walking School Theater Project. Tonight will be our second performance of Dead Man Walking. The most interesting aspect to me, the way the, the students are impacted, I guess I would say I'm surprised at their depth of understanding. It looks like they completely understand where these characters are coming from. I just want to say, I think killer's wrong. No matter who does it, whether it's me, or y'all, or your government. What I'm trying to teach them is that their action, there has a reaction. Learn to say, I'm sorry. Learn to forgive and move on together with your life. The most important work we could ever do is to help change the consciousness of people in the world, to think about things differently. I thought when I first got into this work that it was gonna be controversial the way people could be standing up and screaming at me, but it's story. I don't give them a lecture with facts and arguments. I shingle in important facts as we go through story, but story is what grips us, story for all of us. She has an inner light that's undeniable. It's glowing just like this light is glowing. It's, it's on and you can't get away from it. She draws you towards her. She invites you to hear her own progression and to recognize the deep ambiguity that we feel when we're confronted with really difficult ideas like the death penalty, like crime, like murder. We should be teaching our children to love, not to kill. Love your enemy doesn't mean condone what your enemy has done. It just means like you can't keep them your enemy or you will lose something in yourself because you got to keep feeding the fire of that hatred to keep a person your enemy. Because we are a democracy, what the state does, it does in our names. So we need to wake up. It's all about waking up. It's all about you're only going to live for your own one little life, or you're going to be involved in, in the community and life for everybody, justice for all, to take those wonderful sounding words and make them a reality.